Hello and welcome back to Frey in the Shed and I'm back in the Radio Shack and on this video I'd like to talk about the cheapest way to get into the hobby of CB radio, at least listening to CB radio. This comes up on my CB radio comments all the time. People that were on CB radio back in the day, in the heydays, when we was all kids and it was all fun, a little bit older now, got a little bit more time on their hands, got a little bit more money, want to get back into the hobby. If you're in that situation and you've just come across this video, I'd like to say that I did a whole series recently, six videos on getting started, getting back into CB radio in 2023 and the differences and what equipment is now available to you, how much more channels and more frequencies we've got. I'll leave a link in the description to my channel and I suggest that if you go away and have a look at that, it's all on a playlist. It's all very nice and easy to access those six videos. And I think that's probably the best place to start if you're completely new and you're just looking for information about getting started on CB. One of the biggest mistakes people make at the start of getting into the hobby of radio is they don't do any research and you go on to somewhere like eBay, you see a little tiny CB radio kit with a small springy mini mag mount antenna and you think yeah that'll do i'll click on that it's typically 70 or 80 pounds delivered it's not a massive amount of money and you get your radio and you stick your mag mount antenna on the windowsill on a biscuit tin sometimes people stick it on their radiators in their houses you switch on the radio you flick around with great enthusiasm thinking that it's all going to be like it was back in the uh early 80s and you think it's going to be packed full of channels i wonder if my old mate's still on cb and of course what you find is massive disappointment because you don't receive anything nothing at all and you play around with the radio for a couple of days and then you get a big dose of buyer's remorse and typically these radios end up back on ebay a week later and you take a little drop on the price and that is such a shame because likely it's just your poor choice of equipment what you've chose to buy them there might be people on or around your area that you could have received if you'd gone about it properly i do understand that people want to get into the hobby as cheaply as possible especially in the times we're living at the moment i totally get that and you don't want to spend a massive amount of money now i've always recommended really that people start if you can with a sideband radio but even that is quite expensive not knowing if you're going to get contacts for example the crt 6900 i think that's on a version 7 now that's about 180 pounds now and also another one i recommend is the crt 9900 i think that's about 210 if you wanted a perfectly legal radio because these two radios i've just shown you are not type approved if you wanted to go perfectly legal it's actually even worse than that the only radio that i can find is the president mckinley which is a uk legal radio and in typically that's round about 280 to 290 pounds just for the radio so you can see that it's, it's a big outlay before we start talking about antennas it's a big outlay on the basis that you might do that and you get no signals and you get massive disappointment Another option that people always ask me about, and uh, Greg, I know Greg watches these videos, he's asked us a couple of times, and that is, Fred, well, I'll just buy a handheld CB, because back in the day, if you had a Harvard or an Alba 40-channel handheld CB, you could talk to loads of people on that. Handheld CBs, um, they're mi there's mixed reviews on this. Some people really like them, and I think most people say that even with the standard antenna, which isn't very long, but they can receive lots of stations. It, it's the transmit that, that you get on these handheld radios. It, they don't transmit very far, especially on their internal batteries. Typically, they, it's about three watts maximum output on their batteries. If, if you are really dead set on getting a handheld CB radio, there's two, only two that I would say are worth a look. Uh, the cheapest one is the Midland Allen 42. 
Comes in at about £135 on the internet. Get some fair reviews. Once again, it's let down a little bit by its mini whip antenna. You can update that. There, there is a longer antenna. That's about just over £30, I believe, which I think will, in, will improve it. But you're going to receive more than you're going to transmit on that radio. The only other one I would say that might be worth a look is the President Randy 3. It's quite expensive really, £210, but people swear by the quality of the radio. Once again, it's got a small little antenna. You're going to be restricted to a couple of miles at the most using that, especially in a built-up area. You can buy these small little receivers that I have reviewed these before. This one in particular is about £40 now, the ATS-20. Um, as far as CB radio goes, I'm not really sure that they're ideal for CB radio. I think they can be bettered. And I think they can be bettered by SDR, Software Defined Radio. Now, you can listen to Software Defined Radio, CB, and also ham frequencies by tuning into an internet SDR station, a, a, a website. I've not done a full video on this and that's mainly because I'd have to get permission from the uh, SDR website or the people that are running it and I haven't done that. But I'll just let you know that I myself listen to a, web, a website SDR called Jodrell Bank, Jodrell One here in the UK. And just my personal recommendation, I think that's a great SDR online website to listen to. All of the CB channels are marked out on the frequencies so it's very easy to click and listen. It's not anywhere near my QTH, my home setup, but certainly on CB, which is a little bit quiet at the moment, but on PMR radio there's a, a few networks that go on that you can tune in and listen to. So it whets your appetite, it just maybe gives you that little bit of a taster to CB radio. But of course finding one of those that covers your area is very difficult. been thinking about this for some time and I think the cheapest way in, which gives you the, the most scope, gives you all of the modes, AM, FM, upper and lower sideband, is to buy one of these RTL SDR dongles. SDR, Software Defined Radio. I bought a few of these a while ago. I tested them. There's videos on the channel if, you, if you're interested. The one that I decided that was the easiest to set up and not the most expensive was this Noelec SDR dongle. There's also an RTL SDR dongle, which is pretty much the same thing. This, this is a nice quality dongle made in the USA. And this one comes in, I believe, £36 on Amazon. Now, one thing I'm going to say on these videos, I'm not because I got a little bit of stick on my last video. I'm not associated with Amazon, okay? If I say to you, oh, it's £36 on Amazon, that's, that's probably because where I just bought it from. And in this video, I'll be showing you pictures of examples of things that are available on eBay. I'm not associated with eBay. I don't get paid by Amazon or eBay to promote their products. It's just easier for me to go online and find the prices and show you the pictures, okay? Just let's get that, let's get that straight. But I bought this, yeah, 36 quid on Amazon. I've worked out by spending £36 on one of these, you could get a very good little CB radio setup receiving station for less than £115. I think that's about as cheap as it gets. Next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need something that will connect to a CB antenna. So you've got a small little SMA plug on these dongles. You'll need a converter. I bought one with a little pig towel. It was about £6 a SMA to two, PL259 converter. So that Next, we're gonna talk about antenna choice. Now, I always will say, if you can, I know some of you live in condos, live in flats. I know, you know, you, sometimes your landlord won't give you permission or your wife won't give you permission. <laughs> always try and get an outdoor antenna, get a CB antenna full-sized. Uh, the cheapest one you can buy, which will work really well, is a silver rod antenna. They're about £40 now on eBay. They have crept up in price from when I started making these videos. They're half wave, they're 18 foot long, they're telescopic, so at the very worst you could, in theory, you could undo the Jubilee clips and you could compact it. They, they slide down to just over a metre long 
and it doesn't take long actually to just extend them do the clips back up so you can use them as a portable device if you're a bit worried about sticking up an antenna I started on a pole in an umbrella stand or you could literally make a hole in the ground stick it in the ground um, if you ca yeah you could go the whole hog and you could put it on the side of your house if you've got no problem with planning permission or landlord's permission or permission from from the wife but you're going to need a pole um, the, the minimum you get away with really is a two meter alloy pole aluminium as we say in the UK or aluminium as you guys say in the USO, USA um, they're not expensive actually I was quite surprised they're about 22 quid 22 pounds on eBay delivered which I think is quite fair if you want to get a longer pole to get the antenna higher um, a three meter alloy pole the price jumps up quite a lot and I think this is down to this postage basically um, a two meter pole I think they can get in a, la a large van but when you go up to three meters then it has to come freight on a large lorry and I think that puts the price up because a three meter alloy pole comes in at about 62 pounds so it's almost three times the price so I think stick to the two meter pole if you are going to put it up on the side of your house straight away you'll need the associated brackets they are called T and K brackets and they're about 24 pounds for a set of those on eBay so with your two, two meter pole you're in you're into about 46 pounds you can buy them at the same time as a complete kit I've seen those on eBay and that's about 50 53 pounds so it's a little bit more expensive but you get it all out of the way in one go I did make a video on setting up a silver rod antenna two meters off the ground I will link that in the description so if you're not sure what I'm on about perhaps go away and look at that we now have an SDR receiver, we have a adapter, we have an antenna on a pole stuck up in the garden. The next thing is coaxial cable. To set up at this stage we're only receiving, you don't need to spend a lot of money on coaxial cable so I would just recommend get straightforward RG58, it's as cheap as chips really. You can get a 10 metre roll for £5.50 if you don't mind soldering on the 259 plugs yourself. If you do buy that, you will need to get yourself a pair of PL259 coaxial plugs. They're about uh, £3.50 for two. So for £9, you can make yourself up a 10 metre patch lead. If you don't want to go through the hassle, then you can buy the whole thing already made up for about £14 or £15. That is your basic setup. Pole in the ground, 18 foot antenna, SDR dongle. We'll have a look at this, how it works in a moment all of that I worked it out it comes out at 113 pounds if you wanted to buy a 6900 transceiver that would come out at 267 pounds if you wanted to go the next step maybe and get a 9900 transceiver you're talking about 300 pounds so there is quite a saving by going down the SDR route of course you're going to need a computer for this to work I use a laptop, these aren't too power hungry, they'll work on an older laptop, mine or Windows, but you can get the software from Noelec to work on a Mac, also I think uh, Linux as well, and some people run them from one of those little Raspberry Pi computers and also an Arduino as well. I don't know how you do it, don't ask me, it's a bit technical, but you can get these to run on pretty much any platform. The final piece of the jigsaw that you're going to need is software to run this SDR so you can hear radio stations coming in. I did play about with this uh, a few videos ago and the one that I settled on was a free program called SDR++. I just found it the easiest to use. It also shook off a lot of outside interference that I was suffering. I live very, very close to a large, powerful AM transmitting tower. That was giving me lots of ghost harmonics, lots of ghost signals. SDR++ was quite basic, but it worked for me. And I think that's absolutely fine for hearing local CB. Also skip, handbands, things like that. So let's go downstairs now. Let's um, plug this into my laptop and let's have a listen to see what I can pick up using SDR, my CB antenna. Let's see what's on CB radio. Right. Okay, Chris, thank you for coming. 
came back to me, you, you have the same report here on my receipt on the coast of the southern front. Yeah, you So here we can see um, my setup. I've got a station coming in from southern France. I'll play a little bit of that in a moment because I'm screen capturing it. And that's Chris there, I think that's 588. But basically all I've got, if you look down here, I've got the little dongle there. I do have a AM filter because I do suffer from a massive AM bleed over from uh, a broadcast station into my Antron 99 antenna outside. Then. Not much on the local FM at the moment, that's been a bit quiet recently and our 305 has been a bit quiet, I haven't been able to get on there because of work. But that gives you an idea, so what I'll do is I'll shut up and then I'll, uh, I'll show you the screen capture of some of the stations and you make up your own mind. This is uh, one Alpha Tango seven seven zero. This is uh, one Alpha Tango seven seven zero. Five five eight eight fifty five eighty eight double five double eight QSL. Five five eight eight. Okay, London. Uh, you are five by nine. Five by nine in the log. A negative contribution. Electronic QSL card only. QSL. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you are five and seven, five and nine to London there, QSL. Okay, thank you very much. I wish you a nice evening and good DX. Seven three, bye bye. Yeah, seventy three, happy DX. One zero four, Charlie India. One zero two, Hotel Bravo five. Okay, Johannes. Yes, I remember. We made contact in the past. You're five by five, Johannes. Five five to the Corsica in the log, QSL. I'll bring this one to a close now. Now I do understand this is not for everybody, computer driven SDR radio. Some of you absolutely love it and do nothing else but listen to SDR. Other people are going to hate it and you say, Fred, it's not real radio using a computer. It's not like using a CB or 10 meter radio. And I, I get that. I get both arguments. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be interested to hear your opinion. Personally, I haven't got a problem with SDR. I think you get a hell of a lot for your money. The fact the software is free and this SDR++, I particularly like it. It was recommended to me. And yeah, those little dongles, they're not expensive. And if you've not experienced CB or ham radio, this could open a door to you, as I say, probably the cheapest way possible that you can hear local CB and ham radio. So thanks for sticking with the video. It has been quite a long one. I do really appreciate your view time. I've got a few things coming up on the channel. I'm still working away with that magnetic loop antenna. A uh, video will be coming up with that fairly shortly. Um, what I found with that antenna is you do need very, very good conditions um, to get the received, get the gain up. I haven't got a contact on it yet. I'll be having a little play with that in a few days, but I'm still sticking with it. It's an interesting little project. I've got other new stuff coming into the shack. Literally yesterday, we've got another little CB radio, just a standard 80 channel CB radio came in. So I'll be giving that a review. And that'll be coming up. But as for now, as always, please, please, please look after each other. Stay safe. Happy DX. And catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.